Good afternoon, this is Kathy Chavers, Tribal Chairwoman for Boys Fort. I'm here to give our weekly update with regards to things happening at Boys Fort. Currently, we have one active case of COVID on, on Lake Vermilion side, and that individual is in their 30s, and the contact tracing, isolation, and quarantining has all been completed. We have given over 1,761 vaccines in our clinics in Net Lake and Vermilion, and there are a total of 1,335 individuals who have completed both shots, so they have uh, been completely done with their vaccinations. Our mobile unit that we received is scheduled for March 18 and 19 in Duluth and Minneapolis urban offices uh, to vaccinate our tribal members in the urban areas. We want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to get their vaccinations. And so the last day to register with our clinics is Friday, March 12th. So please call a clinic at 218-757-3650 to ensure that you get registered if you want to get your COVID shot uh, vaccination in the cities. Our offices for the Tribal Government Building in Net Lakes and, and Vermilion have been closed. And at our last Tribal Emergency Response Committee meeting, it's been decided that we should probably start opening up our office doors. So we will be working with our TURC, Tribal Emergency Response Committee, with um, coming up with protocols for opening up our tribal government offices for services. Um, we will be presenting our protocols on Monday, March 15th, to this committee for their review and approval, which is how we do uh, most of the Turk or the um, pandemic related stuff and we are hopeful it will be open soon. We are also in the process of having Damon Day, our emergency preparedness director, he is in the process of coming up with a facilities use form. Uh, even though we'll be opening up our, our tribal government buildings, we will still have protocols in place for uh, you know, making sure that we don't have large numbers that were within the room capacity set forth by the state and by the tribe, and that uh, you know, we're still practicing our masking and social distancing. So there will be a facilities use form also uh, that will be um, for individuals that maybe want to use the facilities for say support meetings or any type of events uh, as long as they use this approved form. Once we get the form approved and get the final date, we're hoping March 22nd to have our building open. So this is a tentative date, it's not finalized, but we will be getting flyers out to let everybody know what the protocols are and when the building will be open. And also uh, to use the use facilities use form if they're gonna be planning any type of trainings or get togethers or support groups or any type of those events in our buildings. Um, the American Rescue Act, I'm pleased to say, uh, has been passed and will now go to the President's signature for on Friday. And we're very excited about that. Right away, we uh, know that one billion of the tribal funds that have been set aside in this uh, recovery, in this rescue act, will be sent to tribes individually um, and divided equally. So what that means is they're gonna take one billion out of the money designated for tribes and they're gonna equally divide it by the number of tribes in the country, which would come up to approximately 1.7 million per tribe. So basically, it will be a somewhat of a base so that to make sure that all tribes at least get $1.7 million allocated to them out of the COVID uh, American Rescue Act dollars. So the other thing is that uh, the tribal leaders did meet with the House Ways and Means Committee and Nancy Pelosi and uh, gave our input with regards to how should those funds be dispersed. In the last stimulus uh, payment that was received last year under the Trump administration, there was a lot of regulations and stipulations on how the money could be spent. So when uh, the tribes, tribal leaders met with the House Ways and Means Committee, we had an opportunity to tell them that, number one, a one size does not fit all funding formula, does not work for tribes. And uh, the regulations and requirements for reporting were very stringent and very hard for some tribes with regards to limited staff in their accounting departments. So basically, some of the one of the some of the three things that came out of that meeting was number one, offering the tribes flexibility on how to use the dollars. 
Each tribe is different. We know we're all sovereign nations and we're different. But the way we use our money should be determined by the tribes, not by the federal government. So the tribes asked for flexibility. We also asked for um, to recur loss of revenue funding um, out of this money. Before, we weren't allowed to, um, if it was in our budget, we couldn't, we couldn't use that funding for that item. If it was from lost revenue from our casinos, we couldn't use the money for that. That was with the last stimulus bill. With this bill, they are hopefully going to say that yes, we can use it for lost revenue for our casinos. The other thing we're asking about is tribal certification. When the U.S. Treasury came out with a formula for the distribution of the funds, there was no tribal input with regards to how the funds were going to be dispersed, what the formula was going to be, the reporting requirements, and etc. So with the tribal certification, um, what they will do is they will come up with a formula and ask the tribes to certify, number one, let's say they use population as an example as part of the formula. We don't know what that formula is right now, but if this is just an example. If they're going to use population as part of the figure for um, the formula, then they want tribes to certify that that population number is correct. If they go by census data, we know that that's not correct. If they go by housing data, we may be missing some. So tribal certification is important when it comes to uh, this amount of money that's going to be dispersed to tribes because that way we can certify that yes, those numbers are correct. The other thing is regarding reporting requirements is to loosen up some of the regulations with regards to the reporting requirements. A lot of smaller tribes like ourselves do not have the uh, staff or uh, funding capabilities or to employ even qualified accounting staff to help with these reporting requirements. They were very, very strict and they were very, very hard. Our CFO spent at least 20 hours on one report for the COVID funding, the total COVID funding, but that's a long time to be spent on trying to figure out where the money is being spent. The tribal government has also been working on projects coming for this upcoming stimulus funding package of, from the Rescue Act. And uh, we have just now put out a flyer on our website that and our Facebook page that is asking for band member input on what they think or would like to see the American Rescue Act COVID funding be used for. Like I said, right now um, we don't know what if there's flexibility, if there's strict guidelines, um, we're, we're hoping there aren't. And we know that um, with this new president and new uh, Senate and House that uh, we believe there will be flexibility. But we want to hear from our band members with regards to how they feel some of those funds could be dispersed. You may have ideas out there that we're not aware of. Um, I do know, for example, when we were on uh, tribal leaders calls that there was some money out actually set aside for mortgages and insurance with uh, homeowners um, where it's really just dealt with renters in the past. So if you have any comments or ideas, we would like you to contact Victoria Villebrun or WICO as we call her at 218-757-3261 or you can email her at vvillebrun, V-I-L-L-E-B-R-U-N, at boysfort-nsn.gov. Also, the CDC guidelines came out this week, and they now state that if you are fully vaccinated and you have other family in your household or friends, that you can get together in small groups and, social, and have the social distancing and without wearing a mask if you've been fully vaccinated, which means you've had both shots or if you had the one Johnson & Johnson shot. But we do ask that you still take precautions and wear your masks outside, say when you go to the store, when you go to Target, when you go shopping. Um, also practice the social distancing and uh, just be very cautious. There's those variants out there that we don't really know how they're going to impact us. And, uh, you know, we, we just want you to be very um, uh, conscientious about that you actually could be a carrier and not know it and infect others. So that's why we say, please wear your masks and social distance. 
but there is those new CD gui CDC guidelines that did come out. Our tiny homes project has been completed, and so we have three homes, one in Vermilion, one in Net Lake, and one at Indian Point that can be utilized for isolation purposes with positive cases here in Net Lake. Um, the COVID relief payment program is still ongoing until April 1st. These are the checks for $300. If you have not received your application or checks, please call Ed Villebrun or Beverly Mitz Steele at 218 757 3261. And any questions or comments, or if you wonder about your application, please um, check with them and see uh, the status of your check or application, and they will try and get back to you as soon as they can. We do want to say thank you to everybody who's been very patient and, and who has been working with us, who sent us thank you cards for all the things we've done. Um, we really appreciate it, and we really want to ensure that you all be safe. Wear your masks, social distance, use your hand sanitizer, wash your hands. This will be over hopefully soon. Um, and so we are looking into uh, future events or future uh, plans. Summertime is coming, fall time. Uh, we are looking at things in the future. Uh, also discussing those items on will we have them, will we not have them. Uh, we are watching certain events from the past to see how those have impacted uh, for example, the White Earth Powell that was just recently held, will there be cases after that? Is there going to be a surge? Those are things we're watching for to see as we look into the summer because we know that there's a lot of important events that are coming up that we know people want to get out and participate in. So we are going to do our due diligence here at the Tribal Government Building and also work with our community and say team miigwech to you. We will be getting information out regarding some food deliveries that are coming. Um, the AEOA, I believe, will still be distri distributing, and uh, we will try to get those out. We do do flyers home to home, and uh, we can just tape them on your door or whatever, but we are trying to get information out as much as we can. Again, if you have comments on how you feel the uh, COVID uh, Rescue Act dollars should be allocated or what projects you would like to see, please let us know, and uh, we will try to see what we can do with that. Uh, we hope to give you another update next week, so everybody be safe, take care, and uh, giga have a good day. Bye.